My name's Patrick and I'm a co-founder at HelloFresh and a couple of years ago we decided to build what would eventually be known as the HelloFresh farm. And I put this video together to show you not only the design process that we went through to create an award-winning office, but also the kind of culture that you need to create and then nourish to build a world-class team. It's the 18th of January, it's Monday, and me and Hannah are working on pretty much the most exciting job imaginable. So this here is the new office. Well, this is the new office that we haven't actually signed the contract on yet, but we're putting it out to the universe that in fact this will become our office. And we've just spent the last two hours Cutting out, cutting out little pieces of paper with pictures of tables on them and bars and sticking them on. I mean, I, it, I feel like a grown up child right now, except some, somehow this is justifiable as work. And yet this is a thing that I dreamt of doing as a child. What do you think, Luke? Tell me you're excited. Don't, don't swear. I'm so excited. <laughs> so I'm here now. Behind me is Third Way, the fit out guys. I want to turn this into a completely separate feeling part of the building. I'm going to call it the library and I'm going to have bookshelves all around here, floor to ceiling and get thousands of cookbooks. Up here in the library, I wanted to have a boardroom as well, somewhere where we can do big presentations, but boardroom sounds kind of boring. I want to call it the potting shed. I'm going to make it look like a potting shed as well. But the coolest bit is that here, we're going to have a huge set of bleachers, which are going to reach up into the top corner there. And then in the corner, we're going to have a shipping container. So look, things have really started. This is the reception area that you saw before. Well, I say they've really started, they've covered everything up. But up here is a bit more going on. This is mission control now. So each week we're gonna have a little site meeting behind me, there. So they're taking up the raised flooring behind me. And they're gonna start putting the structure in for the bleachers. So we've got a framework and then over the top of that, they're gonna put MDF, I think. And then they're gonna clad that in the scaffolding planks. They've literally been buying scaffolding planks from everywhere that sells them around London because we need absolutely loads of it. So today I've left behind the familiarity and relative safety of central London, I'm out in Hangar Lane. So I'm gonna go and buy a load of wooden pallets. Now, one of the things that we wanna do in the office is clad a lot of the walls and the pillars with some really nice rustic wood. That's an expensive job and we don't have the budget for it, but we want it to happen, like a lot of the things that we wanna happen in a new fresh farm. So, what's the solution? Well, we're gonna do it ourselves. So, I've come up here and I'm gonna buy 100 pallets. I just wanna check that they're pallets that can be easily pulled apart because what the idea is, is that this Saturday and Sunday, we're gonna get the whole team, or as many as possible, down to the new office. We're gonna strip down the pallets, we're gonna sand them off, and we're gonna varnish them, and then we can use that to clad the walls. Now, how do you get all your workmates to give up their weekend? You send them an email, and the title of the email is beer and strippers. And, uh, and then obviously that intrigues them. And then the promise is, and what I've offered them is that if they come down and they strip down the pallets, then they will get beer and pizza. They're quite easily bought. So anyway, I've just got to find this place. I am completely lost. Okay, update, I think I found it. Okay, so I'm trying to do a deal with the guy. We've changed from full-on pallets to just pallet tops, which makes more sense. And he's trying to say two quid per pallet. I need to get him down to one quid per pallet top. He's just gone to talk to them now. Let's see what he says. 
Okay, I got a result. <laughs> Not an amazing result. Got them down from two pounds to one pound 85 for every penny counts, right? They're gonna deliver them in a couple of days. And then the work begins. Okay, so we're gonna go and check out the office. We've got five weeks to go. Can you believe it? Five weeks has gone already. Five weeks to go, it's no time at all. Okay, so check this out behind me. It may look like some kind of funky art installation, but this is actually for distressing the walls. So first off, we wanted to distress the walls, make them look a little bit less shiny and new by using some chemical peel to strip some of the paint off. But it didn't work because it stripped too much of the paint off and it made it all look a bit weird and messy. We've been trying all sorts of different types. So now we're taking a much more analog solution, which is just sticking tape to the wall and we're gonna pull it off, and that has been the most effective solution. So the fact is, you know, there, there are no rules to this. You just gotta improvise and work it out. But every solution we're looking for are solutions which are super cost effective. And who's gonna be pulling that tape off the wall? Well, of course, it's gonna be us to cut down on labor costs as well. Okay, so today's the day. We are going to be doing a whole day of DIY at the new Fresh Farm. Hopefully about 16 people are coming down. It's a Saturday, so I hope they didn't go out the night before. And I hope that those pallets have arrived, because if they haven't, then we're just going to be sitting around having cups of tea like, like builders do, right? For the rest of the day. Anyway, let's go. Here's the team. Woo! My little DIYers. Hannah's taking a warm-up session. Don't want to pull any muscles while we're doing that sanding. <laughs> Employ liability. Oh, I literally work with crazy people <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> different stations so we've got Damien down there just knocking the nails into the pieces of wood so that they can go flush against the wall we've got we've got a sanding station here team sanding them down look like about half an hour ago these were all pallets and they just blitzed through them they're animals I didn't even have time to get any footage of it it is so quick, that's because the operations team were involved in that process. Very, very efficient. There's quite a big question mark over the regulations surrounding beer and power tools. But um, <laughs> just, just don't tell the real builders. <laughs> So that is our first day of sanding done and we've done so much already. I was a little bit apprehensive when we started the process. We had a hundred pallets. I didn't know how we were gonna get through it all, but as per usual, the guys are super efficient and just like get into it. There's so, I don't know, there's a sense of like competition and camaraderie. It's a really, really powerful combination, but we're getting there. We had the beer, we had the pizza, we had the strippers, as you saw and um, things are looking great. I'm so, I'm so proud of the guys. Like it just absolutely sums up the way we are. We just get our sleeves rolled up and get into ourselves and, and really enjoy it too. Okay, let's just go and check the progress. Guys, what's, what's going on? Everyone's boozing. We're discussing strategy. Those guys there are putting up the library shelves. They're going to be made out of scaffolding planks with scaffolding poles painted black through them. And they're going to go all around 
library area at the back. They are so big, I've had to order 3,000 cookbooks. How do you order 3,000 cookbooks without paying an absolute fortune? I went onto Amazon, and you know that sometimes on Amazon there are those books where they charge you one pence to buy the book, and then they charge you, say, £1.50 or £2.50 for the delivery, which is where they actually make their margin. Anyway, I got in touch with one of those sellers, and they're gonna sell me the books for 10 pence per cookbook, but there are some super retro cookbooks from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, some of uh, Gary Rhodes' first stuff with his hair crazy like that. So those are gonna arrive in a few weeks, and hopefully I'll have enough to fill that massive set of shelves. The next thing I'm thinking about is how to get those bleachers behind me to come merge with the potting shed so that somehow it seems like they're fused together. I want the bleachers to actually move slightly into the potting shed. I think it will look super cool. Okay, believe it or not, because I barely believe in myself, it's now three days until practical completion of the new Fresh Farm. Okay, so this here, Remember, this is meant to be the coffee shop, but at the moment, well, we've got four toilets there, and I'm pretty sure that isn't what I put in the brief for the coffee shop, although it's a very practical solution. Could work. Okay, but here's a really good piece of news. I found this amazing Italian guy called Bruno who has a family business making wood-fired pizza ovens. He came over the other day, told him all about this outdoor area here, which has currently got nothing in it but he is gonna give us a custom-made wood-fired pizza oven and barbecue, which he's shipping in from Italy as we speak. Only thing is now, we're gonna have a wood-fired pizza oven in the middle of a car park, because I haven't yet managed to get the decking sorted out, but I have another man coming to see me about that on Friday, and I'm hoping that we're gonna get that sponsored too. And by the way, did I tell you, I got the hand dryer sponsored by Accelerator. So I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, but here's an update. This is something you haven't seen before. Check out behind me. That is the potting shed. So, not satisfied with making a Victorian style potting shed, I also got some slim bricks, which are those little things that like tiles, but they look like bricks, and we had them laid on the back wall there. But there was a bit of an issue, because when we told the guy to lay them, I came along and he was just doing it perfectly, which is, you know, that's what he's doing. He's doing his job, right? But I said, no, dude, it needs to look like it's 150 years old. You need to mess it up. This was a problem for him. He was not happy about having to mess up his work. Eventually, we persuaded him, but the rest of the builders spent the rest of the day taking the mick out of him. He said he'd obviously laid the wall when he was drunk. Awkward but it looks amazing. So the guy in the background there is called Jethro. He's a local artist and he is applying, he's, well, he's a miniature modeling expert. So he's applying fake moss to the wall and he's colored the wall as well to basically make it look like it's 150 years old. Anyway, next time I update you, it's gonna be Friday, completion day. Wish me luck. Three days to go, no problem. I feel like this is a moment that should be commemorated. The whole of the product team are here, eating pizza, drinking beer, should be working. <laughs> They're meant to be putting labels on the spice pots which are going in the kitchen, but this is the first ever meal that's been eaten on the new bleachers in the Fresh Farm. Woo! It's a Hello Fresh Fast. What's the date today? Well, it's, it's June 2016, <laughs> and I'm sure we'll be looking back on this in about five years' time, or maybe one or two, and thinking, oh, where's that guy now? <laughs> Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> Oh, this is your crazy mother. So it's Friday afternoon. We're meant to be moving in on Monday. That's three, that two, two working days left basically until we move in. And if you can hear the noise in the background, it is still happening. The building is not finished yet. We still got to put lights up. The shipping container hasn't been done. The electrics are being done in the background. There is still so much work to do. You know those episodes of Grand Designs or home improvement shows where the people are literally coming down their street and 
everyone is still tidying up the building and there's like, this huge cliffhanger. Is it going to happen? That is exactly you know what it's not the magic of television that is really happening that is what it's going to be like it's going to be a full-on weekend but i'm optimistic and it's looking so beautiful I'm so proud of what we have achieved here the vision is coming to life and there's one thing that is particularly cool and i'm going to go and show you now so remember i told you we were going to put about 5,000 used cookbooks in our library well, the box has arrived Got another thousand coming tomorrow. And Rene and Lucas are putting them on the shelves as we speak. So cool, it's really, really coming together. And then, have a look at the shipping container. In the background, yeah, come and check this out. This is the wall in the background. Remember that wall that we wanted to make look all kind of mottled and old? Well, Pat, the site manager, it's been working on that for no less than three weeks. Three weeks, what am I talking about? Three months. It's finally coming together. Okay, so we're now down to the last, the last finishing straight, the last few hours, Sunday, before everyone moves in tomorrow. Behind me, they've just finished cleaning the windows. There they go there. But right here, the guys from Two Broke Blokes are teaching Emily how to use the coffee machine. People here are jacked up on caffeine right now, I can tell you, because she's gone through quite a few cups trying to perfect that little squiggly thing. It's, it's coming along, it's a work in progress. Rome wasn't built in a day. Good morning, guys, and welcome to the new fresh farm. It is quarter to 10 on Sunday night, the night before you guys are moving in, and we took it to the wire. I cannot believe it. We've literally just finished arranging flower pots in the potting shed and putting bread out on the tables in the kitchen for you guys. And I'm so, so excited for you to see what we've done with this place. We started this journey, which it has been a journey to make this building a reality over three months ago. As I've told a lot of you before, we saw this building and we didn't even think it was a possibility to be able to take it. And when we did, I realized that we had something truly special here, an opportunity to create something that we can be proud of, that we're gonna love, a place to hang out, and a place that really just screams all of our Hello Fresh values. We're gonna be able to entertain here, we're gonna be able to teach people how to cook, and we're just gonna have a great time. I hope that you guys love it as much as we love creating it for you. I'm so happy to hand it over to you now so that you can enjoy it. You deserve it. You work so hard and you deserve to have a space that you love where you feel relaxed and you feel like you can hang out with friends and family because that is what we are. So enjoy it guys. I hope you love it. And Pat just said to me, is this, is this what you imagined it would look like? And I said, to be honest, I never even imagined that any of this was going to happen. It was just a bit of a dream, really. And now the dream's becoming a reality.